program contains recreations of the documented events and incorporates actual footage from those same events. This program is not a news broadcast. Tonight on What Happened, it all began as a Friday tea dance. The music was playing, uh, it was crowded with people. Then the unthinkable happened. This can't happen to me. This is a nightmare. It was the single most devastating structural collapse in American history. What happened? Also, without warning, a huge bridge began to collapse. A camera happened to catch the fall. These incredible pictures became the evidence that answered the question, what happened? Ken Howard. It's amazing sometimes how a complex problem can be made simple. In engineering, the rules are very basic and straightforward, but if you ignore them, uh, you're going to be in real trouble. Next, a tea dance turns to disaster when a hotel collapses on the participants. What happened? On July 17th, 1981, over 1,500 people were enjoying the party-like atmosphere of a weekly dance contest at a newly opened Kansas City hotel. Imagine being a part of that crowd, enjoying the music, the conversation, and the excitement of a night out on the town. Now, try to imagine being trapped under tons of rubble, not knowing what happened, only wondering if you're going to live or die. In our next story, we'll meet some men and women who lived through that nightmare and the amazing scientific detectives from Failure Analysis Associates who were called in to make sure that nightmare never happens again. For failure analysis president, Roger McCarthy, it had begun with a late night phone call. A few hours later, he was in Kansas City, trying to make sense of a catastrophe. The first time I walked into the Hyatt lobby to begin our inspections, it was the most amazing scene I have ever seen at a disaster inspection. This was a, a, a very important event a lot went wrong here, and it's very important to understand why. The Hyatt Regency Hotel in Kansas City, Missouri, opened in 1980. From the beginning, the hotel hosted tea dancing in their main lobby, and soon the Friday event had become a local institution, attracting thousands of couples intent on recapturing the sound and spirit of the 1940s. The afternoon of July 17th, 1981, was no exception. When you at that time walked into the Hyatt lobby, it's an atrium lobby, and it was beautiful. Uh, the ma music was playing, uh, it was crowded with people. It was, just, it was just a very joyous atmosphere, it was a very relaxed atmosphere, it was a very comfortable atmosphere. It was a beautiful new hotel, and the lobby was an atrium lobby, and so you could see up several floors. And there were people everywhere. Uh, there were balloons, there were streamers. It was just a very festive mood. People of all ages came from hundreds of miles around to attend the event. Even if they didn't come to dance, many decided to watch from on top of one of the hotel's overhead skywalks.
That afternoon was a family reunion of sorts. Tom and Jean Weir had arranged to meet Jean's brother and his wife for drinks. Oh, Jean, oh, there you are, Jean. Oh, I'm so glad. We had just finished our drinks. My sister and her husband, well, we'll go get you some more drinks. So they wandered off from us. We'll be back here. Bar's over there somewhere. At about 7.05 p.m., the dance contest began. Oh, Tom, you have to hurry. Look. Oh, I love this. They're terrific, aren't they? Next dance, you know me. All right. All right, let's go. Let's the Weirs headed back to the Liskies with their drinks. Jim and his wife were waiting for them right below the skywalks. I was, I was watching the dance dancers when something came down in front of my eyes. Plaster dust or a piece of plaster. Something drew my attention upwards. At that instant, I knew something was going to happen. It was just a tremendous crash. This, this can't happen to me. This is a nightmare. The hotel's two skywalks had collapsed, killing a number of people who were unlucky enough to be underneath and trapping scores of others. Everybody between us and the dance floor was uh, was underneath the, uh, the debris that came down, including my sister and her husband. Tom Weir lay pinned under the skywalks. His wife was only a few feet away. <laughs> Being trapped under the rubble was horrific. And it actually took a few seconds before I realized that the person under there was me. It took only seven minutes before the first rescuers arrived. In the meantime, those fortunate enough to escape injury did what they could. As he lay trapped, Tom Weir could hear the voices of a young mother and her child who were trapped near him. They're going to get us out, Eric. Oh. No. Their father will hurt me. Oh, my God. Their kingdom come. They will return on earth and heaven. We met all this uh, terrible carnage. It was kind of like a voice of security because they started praying together. <laughs> and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Immediately after the collapse, the sprinkler system had flooded the lobby. And as rescuers finally arrived, even the most veteran workers were shocked at what they beheld. Joseph Wackerly, a local physician, was called to the scene to assist in the rescue and treat the injuries of the people still trapped under the rubble. Walking into the Hyatt, the first impression that you got was that, that there'd have been a bomb go off. I mean, you don't walk into a modern contemporary hotel on a Friday night in uh, Midwestern America and expect to see such devastation. The people had been crushed and people had been uh, severely injured and there, were, there was blood mingled in the water with body parts. I distinctly remember that. Dr. Wackerly began to focus his attention on the mother and son near Tom Weir. He did his best to calm the child down. Hold on there, partner. Uh, My name's Dr. Joe and I'm a emergency <laughs> medical physician. I'm here to help you. I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? What I want you to try to do is move your leg a little bit if you can. Ow! Hold on, that's okay. That's okay, partner. Here's what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. 
For the men, women, and children trapped under the rubble of the hotel skywalks, their lives hung in the balance. Once the rescuers arrived, it would become a race between their skill and time. Very quickly, that time was running out. We'll be right back.